good defensive Old Miss team with great length and size on the perimeter, which is their advantage in this matchup today. And Old Miss coming off their win Thursday against Auburn. And the white jerseys are the visitors and Ja'Kayla Jordan in the maroon jersey for the Bulldogs. And wise play off the tip and it'll be Bulldogs rock to start off this game. Our officiating crew, Denise Brooks, Maggie Tyman, and Bill Lawrence. Veteran crew here today from the hump. And the Bulldogs who have gotten stronger. A little revamped look from last year. Worked through the transfer portal. Lauren Park Lane among them along with Aaron Barnum coming over from Arkansas. Opening possession, empty possession for Mississippi State as Ole Miss will set to take it down the court. You talked about Madison Scott taking over that point guard position with an injury earlier in the season. She along with Taya Singleton, Stella Collins, Marquisha Davis, and Rita Ibakwe rounding out the starting five. Ibakwe trying to find the open player. Here's Davis off the mark and Running down to get that offensive rebound and Davis baseline jumper. Better look and better result. Both these teams, excellent offensive rebounding percentage. How does a Mississippi State team combat that here tonight? Well, they got to move the ball. You got to get in the gaps. You got to be ready to shoot it when you when you have an opening. And you got to make sure that you just find the best opportunity. Turn a good shot into a better shot. And get on the offensive glass. Both teams scoring on offensive rebounds early. Strong rebounding team on both sides as Jessica Carter with the put back. That shot deflected. Well, Sam Purcell coming off a fabulous first year with the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Help take them to the NCAA tournament. Coach Yo, as she's affectionately known, boy, what a great job that she has done in building it this Ole Miss program back into a contender leave and get better and better and as she coined the theme earlier this season next WNIT finals and 21 their first round exit in 20 incredible coach at Auburn and took that team to three final four so he's been around working through the profession to give himself an opportunity and now gets to lead this program Jerkayla Jordan is obviously one of those important pieces that Collins into the hands of Jordan. Jordan just kind of sneaking around. They make it difficult for you all the way around, but a great look of Madison Scott at six foot two, helping to corral it back in. And how about Jessica Carter saying, no, ma'am. The block back the other way. Aaron Barnum, can she convert it into points? No. Is burning the candle at both ends to come up with. A mighty team of one, would you say? <laughs> Watch film in that way because you can find something new and interesting about the players to really. Well, taking care of the basketball is going to be also equally as important for both teams as Carissa Richardson. Aaron Barnum says, I want to get in on the block party. Top shot there, rolls around. She had a big game against LSU, but that's an example of situational offense and why it's important because Coach Yo can dictate. Number 21 and wide into Singleton. The turnaround, Jay won't fall. Singleton, top of the key, three well off the mark. Another offensive rebound, and again, Marquisha Davis for the Bulldogs. Jessica Carter. Her shot made difficult. Davis once again, yes. Davis at 15 in her last outing. That one stolen away by Stevenson. A wide open look, Miss Bunny. Her coaches talk about that all season I mean, long and the on. importance of that. Come on. Miracle Shepard with the take. Quickly going back to her bench and calling Madison Scott off the pine. you got to have some offensive plays that your team feels comfortable with, especially with an evolving point guard on the top of the floor. Stevenson thought about it. Shepard closing out well. Stevenson contests, takes them deep into the clock. They just make a play. Miracle Shepard again back to... Defense! 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 
Marquisha Davis leading all scores with eight. Snutter Collins back over to Madison Scott. Ty Singleton and Ty Singleton hits it. Good point guards understand what I call the three W's. Who to get the ball to, when, and where. You have to know personnel. You have to know where Jessica Carter likes to catch the ball on the block. What side? What's her go-to? What's her counter? What passes can she catch? You know she can catch a lob. You gotta like that. They clear it out for her. It's a good ATO to start the second quarter. Carter, three of four from the floor for six points so far to lead the way for Mississippi State. Both teams shot the ball okay in that first quarter. Looking to improve on that field goal clip. Scott, open look. Then you have a better chance of getting an uncontested perimeter shot. Jordan would have been bothered a little bit by an ankle injury earlier this week. Tucked it out. Hasn't missed a game in her career. And back the other way, Marquisha Davis. Boy, the way that she has blossomed into the score that she is. Putting up better than 12 points a game to lead the way for the Rebels. And just that quiet threat for Coach Hill. And she's gotten some confidence, especially during com uh, conference play. I thought she played really well last weekend against LSU. She's a hard driver, a downhill player. And so is Miracle Shepard. What a move and a take from the freshman. As Jessica Carter is able to haul that rebound in. That's a good defensive possession. You force a shot that you want them to take, not allow them to take the shots they want to take. Nice pass off and dump off from Jordan to Carter. The and one, and Jessica Carter has started to play like a woman possessed and now her last two SEC games. She had a couple of buckets in the first quarter, and this is right down the lane line, a little pick and roll game, and you throw it up high where she has great length and she can go up and catch. Carter showing us a little bit with her footwork and her reverse pivot to score a bucket, and you see right here, Tiff, you know, look at the numbers, like the first two games, 14 and 18, and look what she did against Arkansas. It's impressive. Popped out, Todd Williams can't connect. Kennedy Todd Williams would be now four for 30. I don't think that's the first option from beyond the arc. To Kayla Jordan, tough shot there. How about Montague hauling in that rebound and putting it back in? Is that a yabba no, dabba? Yabba dabba, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we'll explain that one in just a second. That's been created by Sam Purcell and this Mississippi State team. And folks inside the hump like to yell it out as well as Montague dropped a three, four star freshman on this squad. And you saw back on the other end. An effort. Sam Purcell's trying to get the crowd to understand what it means. But here's how you get a yabba dabba play. And the fans understand it. And when it happens, you can hear them yell yabba dabba. It's pretty funny, actually. But it's a great way to engage the group. It's kind of like, you know, turkey. You know, yeah. you get three stops. It's called a turkey, right? Yep. Or a kill. I love it. You think about the way that Auburn put a scare in Ole Miss Thursday night. And Coach O just talked about, hey, we thought that could have been a trap game to close out the deal for a three-point victory over the Tigers. Oh, this is a play that Ole Miss team, that was a great look. You got to make that shot. A 23-20 lead for Mississippi State. Just over five minutes to go in the half. Ibakwe has that. A senior out of Jonesboro, Georgia. Played her first in of her career at Pitt. And the way that Jerkayla Chort, unafraid to pull the trigger. Off the mark, Davis kicks it out to Collins, but steps on the end line. 17 pounds. <laughs> You do the detailed work. That's one of the things I love you, love about you. Jordan has that one go off her foot. 
Single digits on the shot clock. Debris Chapeau looking. She's got a quick trigger. Release. Instead, the defender falls down. The Ole Miss has responded off the timeout by Coach Yo. They have scored four of their last five trips. And an open look in the corner from top. On the other side for the Bulldogs. And trying to go right at Collins. And Poe trap. Well, she was the Tar Heels' top three-point shooter a season ago before making her way to Oxford. Good ball movement, swinging around. Corner. Got to work quickly. Not a lot of time on the shot clock. Poe, can she get it up in time? No, that one. I wonder if they take the block shot off the statue that they called shot clock violation. Nope, they, they put it down as yeah. an actual block, okay. so second of the game. Well, that's good. For Ole Miss. You mentioned they averaged just about better than six a game. I saw a really interesting graphic today on SEC Network about the Arkansas guys and how they've had slow starts, yet they had great finishes. Mariah Noel kicks it right back over to Scott. Collins. And Singleton saves it, but it goes right into the hands of Aaron Barnum. And holding for the last shot is Miracle Shepard. Sees the Mississippi State offense get set in the half court. Shepard just puts her head down, and downhill she goes. And the bucket. Just what Mississippi State needed before heading into the locker room. And as we told you, going into the locker room, it's been Marquisha Davis who has been the difference maker offensively for Ole Miss. Madison Scott. 24 and white flashing at the free throw line. There's Collins down low and a bunch of maroon jerseys around the Bakwe jump ball and the possession arrow out of the intermission goes to Mississippi State. Carter, who was coming off a terrific game, 22 and 19 Thursday, looking to add to her point total with 13 points. Getting back to work on the defensive end, going against Ibakwe. Ibakwe at the free throw line. Six central and going into today, only two undefeated teams. Miracle Shepard has had eight points off the bench. Jerkayla Jordan ready to see her rev up I mean, very difficult shot there really good d that time the length of madison scott definitely bothering jordan Woo! the skates from marquisha davis i mean that's an excellent pull-up jump shooter right there in transition she put a hurting on lsu in transition last weekend marquisha davis has been deadly, but so has Debrisha Poe in moments when you see her pull. She's tough. Coach O is upset, and I don't blame her. Everyone knows that's the best three-point shooter. You can't lose her in transition. But Mississippi State does a good job of setting her up by forcing Ole Miss to seek the level of the ball, and they lose her. Offensive intensity picking up on both ends as Snitta Collins drops the 15-footer. Lauren Park Lane with the open look and knocks down the trifecta. Remember she hit 10 triples in a game and that yes. opening <laughs> and that win earlier in the season against Colorado State. Boy, what an addition. Grad transfer has been so far this season. As Taya Singleton back the other way, the answer and a chance at a traditional just a grade for them. <laughs> Kayla Jordan's feeling that pressure, just trying to look for the open player. And Lauren Park Lane with a high arcing three. And it bounces out.
Davis, eight of 12 from the floor. Again, looking to create. Instead, kicks it out. So to Collins, ball fake and good contest there. Here goes Shepard and that one, the elevation there, swatted away by Collins along the baseline. We talked about how they are the second best blocking team in the SEC, just about seven a game, three today. Collins off center, shooting her free throws. A lot of players will line up their, if they're a right-handed shooter, their right foot on the nail. And you see she's a little bit off center there. Right on target for both of those free throws. Well, she has just been back for more after the best season in her. And you got to be a, a threat to score, and she does that playing underneath. Look at Carter close that space on the Bachway. That's an excellent defense. And better on the putback, the offensive rebound, and the bucket for Kennedy See, Todd Williams. That's where the size of. Lauren Park Lane is an issue because she had the Kennedy Todd Williams matchup defensively and she was able to she wasn't able to block her out but this is what she can do on the offensive end when she needs to score she can do that a great score she was quiet in the first half but she's coming alive now but a great score coming over into this program, something that Sam Purcell knew that she would add to this team, but also averaging six, six assists a game, second best in the league. Well, and he's right now getting her off the ball because she's able to score, and she doesn't have the responsibility of running the offense right now. So it's a good move by Sam Purcell. The first team to win as a first fort. And Shepard missing both. Madison Scott wanting to help elevate to the next level for her team along with Marquisha Davis and Jesse Carter. It's gotten better and better. You see 60% here. Marquisha Davis thought about it, wanted to get in a little bit closer. That degree of difficulty too great as the shot clock winds down, but still a bucket there. So able to make positive on that offensive possession, and the Rebels stretch it out to four. Miracle Shepard for three. And the communication between Todd Williams and Scott puts it back in the hands of the Bulldogs, and Jessica Carter making good. That's a tough shot right there. I think Ole Miss turned it over. Handing it right back to the Bulldogs, a one possession game. Jessica Carter, seven of 10 from the floor. And this is, I mean, one on one in the post right here, Tiff. Goes to her offhand. You got to stay on your feet, though. This is a make 15 points now for Jessica Carter. And if she tries to sky for that rebound. Ibakwe comes up with it. Collins thought about it. Comes in a little bit closer. The mid-range won't fall. Madison Scott. And a lot of contact underneath the basket. And Aaron Barnum is whistled for the personal foul. Staying aggressive because she's not in foul trouble. When a shot blocker's not in foul trouble, you get to the second half. You start being more aggressive. And you see the aggressiveness picking up, too, in terms of team fouls. You think about Mississippi State, second best in the nation, coming into today's game in terms of fewest fouls committed. They don't do it a lot, averaging 12 a game. And Mississippi State still without Jerkayla Jordan having a big game. as She's just one for nine. They looked at two in maroon she's got the ball in her hands and nine seconds and counting on the shot clock sizing up davis you have a two for one here oh beautiful nice alley -oop. just consistently put up numbers throughout her career as jessica carter and coming back as the leading scorer and rebounder from a season ago where she's having herself a day Got a very hard right-hand driver. And it's a beautiful pull-up jump shot, so you get one more possession here. 
So the Collins gives them a four point lead and Mississippi State looking to close in the drive from Lauren Park Lane, the contact, she draws the foul. Marquisha Davis picked up the personal foul, her third. Lauren Park Lane, a 66%. And they come within two on the inbound. Can they get it up in time? And Marquisha Davis not able to do so. We haven't seen the full court or the three-quarter court pressure yet, the half court pressure that Ole Miss loves to play. And they usually generate some opportunities with that. You've got to know where the three-point shooters are on the backside of that, though. So I'm waiting to see if Coach Yo will bring that out here in the fourth quarter when she needs it. But I think right now Lauren Park Lang has got a great handle on the tempo of the game for Mississippi State. She's going to pick up a foul right here. Bakway on the inbound. Madison Scott. And Kennedy Todd Williams on the drive and the paint left hand tough shot. Ole Miss getting to the free throw line and the makes that they have each game averaging about 17. So one of the top 10 in the country in doing so. Todd Williams knocks down the first. Kentucky in Columbia at 7 Eastern. And of course there's the men's doubleheader Tuesday from Tuscaloosa as Crimson Tide hosts Missouri and then Texas A&M and Arkansas at 9 Eastern all right here on the SEC Network. Here's the full court pressure. I was wondering when it was coming. It came on the next possession. You mentioned it on cue. And Aaron Barnum knocks down the baseline. Jay. You want to speed up the game a little bit, and I think that's what Ole Miss wants to do right here. And you got to make sure that you're when you open up the court, especially the Lauren Park Lane, that you know where the three-point threats are. So you can see them and find them. Here's Collins thinking about it. Got a little bit of time to work with on the shot clock. And Miracle Shepard comes up with the rebound. Jessica Carter flashing. They want to get it to her as much as possible. They have been successful in doing so. And even at 53, you see Sam Purcell hyping up the crowd. Really good patience by Lauren Park Lane. That's what I'm talking about right now. She has a complete handle on the team. You go under all ball screen action with Ole Miss. Too strong from Todd Williams. I'd go right back to Carter. I'd let her get a chance to shape up to the ball inside. Instead, Aaron Barnum starting to feel it. Too strong. Tracking down the rebound. They go back to five in Maroon. This time, the and one. The hoop and the horn. This is just great footwork. A little up and under move. And the last play, watch Carter sprint the floor. She makes herself available, good timing on the flash. You gotta jump to the ball if you're Ole Miss and they didn't do that in transition. Collins has been excellent in the mid range here in the second half. The elevation from Madison Scott and Miracle Shepard got a piece of her on the way up. Madison Scott don't foul a lot and they don't put teams to the line but that's a difference right here for Ole Miss they're she's out on the wing instead they go inside to Carter and Carter turn around Poe in the face down a Bakway little body action Jessica Carter trying to corral the rebound and jump ball Ole Miss women's basketball history and now they need to lean on that defense here, trailing by three. Try to swing it in their favor, but you gotta find an answer for Jessica Carter down low. Travel. 
I mean, Carter is working. Mississippi State was able to build a lead off that change in defense. They've got to do a better job of guarding the ball. Here an opportunity. Tough shot in traffic. The heart, that effort. Wow, sloppy. Two turnovers, the last three trips down the floor for Mississippi State. Kennedy Ty Williams looking inside to Ibakwe, trying to work on Jessica Carter, hands up at the free throw line. Excellent rim protector. She puts up better than two blocks a game as there's a mindset that they're taking in this final three plus minutes. They want to try to defend without foul. We haven't talked much about your Kayla Jordan just because she's had a quiet into the NCAA tournament. He says, look. Stella Collins comes in. She's been crucial in that mid-range. The diminutive five foot three, Lauren Park Lane. Holding her own. Debris Chapeau. Quick release. Where Ole Miss has had a favorable stance. That one almost went down. And Aaron Barnum trying to wrestle that rebound. I mean, you try to get the double team. Ball fake. Left hand. Timely for Jerkayla Jordan. Now a 10 point. You got to go quicker than this. Advantage. The sense of urgency for Ole Miss. Now you got to foul to extend the game, and you don't want to foul her. You want to foul Park Lane right here. Instead, a lot of time being eaten off the clock. and I don't think Ole Miss managed the end of the game as what they've practiced. And Lauren Park Lane knocks down the first of two free throws. And Mississippi State. You don't, you don't want to have to play them a couple times. And Sam's doing a little dancing over there. He's enjoying the rivalry of this game and this crowd. He's he was pretty fired up yesterday, yeah. uh, this morning, yeah. that's for sure. He, was game, he had game face on early this morning. <laughs> Well, he brought so much of the energy, and he said, look, I need my team to switch it on and be ready for this moment. Last season, he told me, he told everybody, hey, talk to me nice. This year, one. What's going to be that one? How are they going to improve from one game to the next as Scott tries to laser it down to Bakwe. But given the situations late in the game, if you had asked Coach O, she would have loved having her team on defense, and they just didn't get the stops they needed. Credit Mississippi State for a well put together game plan and a great execution. Great job the last couple of minutes. They took one more step by beating their in-state rival as Mississippi State finishes the game.